Hi, friends of GMBA. Welcome. How's everyone doing today? Excellent, excellent. Um, we're going to walk you through this year's list, give you some strategies and access points of how to get kids into these books. Um, they can work with this. They can also obviously work beyond the list. So we're trying to give you some, some really thoughtful, fun strategies that can work um, for a wide variety of readers. Um, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Peter Langella from Champlain Valley Union High School. I am Kat Redness. I'm the chair of GMBA. I am young adult librarian, teacher, advocate for the underserved. All those fun things. I'm Sue Mominy, and I'm the librarian at Montpelier High School. Marilee Atley, I'm the librarian at Brattleboro Union High School. Excellent. Can everyone hear us okay just before we go on? Awesome. Great. And if at any point you have any questions, I know that at the end we'll ask some, but if there's anything that you want us to clarify throughout, feel free to just throw a hand up or interrupt us. Um, we'd love to clarify what we've got on the screen. Okay, you're going to see all 15 books um, represented at least in some way. Um, some will go more in depth than others. Please feel free to get the materials that Grace has brought in the back, um, which help give you some great ways to use those book talks, um, curriculum connections, book discussion questions, um, fun activities, and other resources. So that's a that's a uh, great way to start. All right, we'll get started. Ooh, I think you went too we, far. Oh, it's a oh, two. There we go. Just as a quick introduction. We talk about genres, we talk about subjects, and got to thinking about, okay, how could we group books in a way that kids might want to group things? And one thought came to mind of playlists on their iPod or their phone or whatever. And so created a few <laughs> different playlists for some of our books. And one of the photos loads slowly. Okay. But here's the first playlist is starting over. And just a little music to get us going. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Tube Chop, fabulous little uh, resource if you want to take just a snippet from a YouTube video. <laughs> so starting over, and one of our photos is not showing up, which is, oh. where'd it go? It should be, what's over there? Out of nowhere. Okay, so we have. <laughs> <laughs> I <it's> not appropriate. <laughs> it is. We have every day, talking about every day, this young man, woman, 16-year-old. Being. Being. <laughs> a is in a different body. Always aging at the appropriate time, but never knowing what nationality, what gender, health, anything. Starting over all the time. Escape from Camp 14, true story about a young person escaping from a North Korean internment camp. Beautiful music for ugly children. Starting over with young person transitioning from female to male, and what's that like? And then, out of nowhere, how appropriate that it's not showing up. Um, small town in Maine with a recent influx of Somali refugees, and what life is like in this, in this town now with the two different cultures, and everyone having to start over. Oh, oh there we go. Oh. oh, must be, I put a transition in. You Over look, you, you did a transition. <laughs> And what was this one? Oh, love songs. I'm thinking. Or love. Yes, love. Interesting place to stop. <laughs> and so again, we have every day. We also have the coldest girl in Cold Town who falls for, we won't tell you who. <laughs> um, and then we have Eleanor and Park, fabulous little love story about two middle schoolers, I want to say? High schoolers. High yeah, schoolers. Yeah. They are high schoolers. Sophomores. Okay, why did I think they met in middle school? I'm thinking of some. And Blink and Caution, two young runaways falling in love. Work out. This is basically world domination. <laughs> 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 And 
And we have Joe Gollum in the Drowning City takes place in New York City where half of the city has been flooded. And here's this being Joe Gollum is essentially battling <laughs> How do I say this without giving too much of the story away? World <laughs> domination, we'll just say. Emperor Mollus versus the Sinister Brain. Personally, I love the subtitle, Better He Came, He Squirmed, He Conquered. How can you not love this book? Ready Player One, Virtual Reality. Again, world domination in a way. Fifth Wave, Aliens Come, and it, this book is about the fifth wave of them coming. The, and our hmm? oh sorry I just when I was looking up fifth wave it said it will do for aliens what Twilight did for vampires that was one <laughs> of the blurbs about it and our last one is saying goodbye and I had help from a friend's young daughter with this song everybody's gonna die don't make you wanna cry don't make you wanna <laughs> kick and scream and act soon and every way before the country on the grave <laughs> It seemed perfect for this playlist, <laughs> which is Grave Mercy, basically an assassin. Uh, we have Cage Graves, where they, this, the author actually discovered these graves that were in cages and wrote this <clears throat> fictional story about why. Ten uh, has been compared to, and then there were none, and then Rotters, where a young boy um, takes on the family business, and we'll hear more about that <laughs> later. That's awesome. All righty. So there we go. Oh, I guess that's me. <laughs> you can also do a straight book talk. <clears throat> so the main characters in, in this book, Tom Bouchard, he's one of those guys. You know, he's number three in his class. He dates the hot girl. He's the captain of the soccer team. But the only thorn in his side is that his team isn't very good because all the other teams around there get to play in, in the AAU and all the guys are rich. But one day, they're playing their toughest, their toughest rival and he's about to run into who he, a, t a player he nicknamed Sasquatch in his head, you know, so you can kind of imagine. And then behind him, he hears, pass to me. And so he passes back and it turns out he's passed to a boy who is a Somali refugee who's just moved to their town who can do magic with a soccer ball, right? And so all of a sudden, Tom sees that there's this whole other possibility out there that maybe all he has to do is get these Somalis on board and everything will change. This is a great book about soccer, but it's an important book about immigrant cultures and bringing refugees into your, into your community. But I think the most important thing it's about is trying to do the right thing and how hard that really is. Out of nowhere. That's great. So I'm going to talk to you about um, a Sweet Sixteen book tournament, or what we could call, if you use these books, Green Mountain Book Award Reading Madness. And so um, a Sweet Sixteen tournament is something that I've seen on some blogs that librarians you know, around the country are doing, where they're trying to um, piggyback off the excitement of the March Madness basketball championships and use books to create a tournament uh, with votes with their students. So go on. So. This is from CBU. Uh, this is the window outside our library in a little vestibule area we have. And this was our kind of main bracket. We had the bracket uh, various other places. Um, and so one of the reasons why I think we didn't use uh, the GMBA books this year in our first year trying this, but after um, being on the committee with these guys and talking about it, it, it seemed like, wow, this is a really good opportunity to put these 15 books into a bracket. So obviously a, a sweet 16 bracket has 16 books, one more, and that gives kind of an opportunity for students to do something really fun. Maybe, um, you know, this year's Green Mountain Book Award winner, which will be selected later this month, ends up in the bracket with uh, next year's 1415 list. So say, you know, Fault in Our Stars ends up winning hypothetically. That will Fault never happen. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> It didn't win my bracket. <laughs> so fall, say Fault in Our Stars, then Fault in Our Stars could now join the next year's list, and then this year's winner could join the next year's, and it could be a cycle where that 16th book could come in. Or you could do a voting with uh, your students and say, you know, what book didn't get on the list that's been published in the past couple of years that you really thought should have been on the list, and give them an opportunity to, to bring a book uh, in there for the voting. So in a 16-team tournament, there's four... Uh, distinct little regions, I guess you could call them, like they would be called in a basketball bracket. And so one of the ways to split them up is uh, Sue's idea of the, the playlist. And so you could get across that idea of the playlist and having the four quadrants and 
So you can get in the reading tournament and the playlist idea and get all this information out to students and really get them excited in a, in a couple of different ways. And so um, what we did for voting is we, we mirrored the um, March Madness basketball tournament over the four weeks. So we had the four rounds that take place to get a winner happen with each one of the weeks and the rounds of the basketball tournament. And so you can see the little orange sign that says take a bracket and vote. We had paper there where they would just fill out a, a bracket and pass them into a box in the library if you go to the next mm -hmm. thing. And then we also just did a simple um, Google form where uh, we created uh, uh, the online voting version. And this one is, is set up with what ended up being the championship, which was Ender's Game versus Hunger Games. And Ender's Game ended Ooh. up beating books like um, the, the Mortal Instruments series, City of Bones. It ended up beating Fault in Our Stars. And that was something that was like really surprising for us. Uh, we'd never expected Ender's Game to end up in the, in the championship. Um, and so the, the Google form was good, and we just um, we posted QR codes to the Google forms with each round that people could scan. We also created a little tiny URL. That I think it was tiny URL, tiny URL slash CVU votes or something like that, and so people could type that in. Uh, so we wanted access for people who like the traditional uh, paper versions. We wanted access for the people who didn't want to take more time than three seconds to just you know QR code it and, and just press the one button and submit to get their votes in, but I think it, it, it worked pretty well and there was quite a bit of <coughs> excitement around it. Um, these are just zoomed in versions of the bracket as it's going. So at the end of each round, we put these red X's over the books that, that lost the round and then the books that went on. This um, Divergent vs. Hunger Games was a second round matchup that was uh, really heated. Yeah. Uh, there were some students, we actually wow. had the second round was the highest numbers of voters we had because people lost and then got very angry and didn't, didn't come back <laughs> to vote. But that was still positive that they were such champions of those books. Um, and so keep going. So just some things so you could uh, mirror the March Baptist basketball tournament like we did. Or a good idea for the GMBA books is to do a full year thing where I think you could do one round every couple months since... A lot of times, most people haven't read all of these books that are going to be on the list. You know, several students may have read one, two, three, four, but some students may have read, um, haven't read any of these books. So you could do, you know, September to March, one round every two months. Then you can use it as a voting tool for Green Mountain Book Awards. So now you're getting people excited about this tournament. They're reading the books. Someone who reads three or more books is eligible to vote for the award. And so you've built in um, this really good <coughs> voting pool of students by uh, having them participate in this, in this um, tournament bracket, which is kind of an interesting thing. And then um, you can uh, use the, the tournament to create Green Mountain Book Award experts, and experts are great at speed dating, and I'll, I'll talk a little more about that later. Uh, these last couple slides are just, one of the ways we advertised it was we got a chalkboard like cafes or restaurants, and uh, my library assistant is a, is a Pretty uh, good, good artist with the chalk and stuff. So she came up with this fictional four That's symbol, awesome. like the final four. Um, she would post different round updates, and um, then we go to the last one, which is after the Hunger Games uh. won. You know, she she drew that, which which the kids were really excited about, especially the people who voted for the Hunger Games. And so it was really kind of interesting that Hunger Games ended up winning, even though it's a little older. With the you know the momentum of the movies and these people kind of came out of the woodwork as champions for this book against something like the Fault in Our Stars or or something that's uh, come out more recently. So it was just a fun experience, and I think with the GMBA books it could really be great. Peter, yeah. How much you you said the participation was increasing, but how many kids actually did participate? Um, so in the second round was our our biggest round. There was 149 votes. Wow, wow, um, wow. great. And so we have we CVU is the largest school in the state at 1,300 students. So. Uh -huh. um, it still is a small percentage of school, but it, uh, a nice percentage. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Great. Awesome. Ah. Hello there. Welcome to Community Radio 90.3 KZUK, the Z that sucks. This is beautiful music for ugly children, and I'm your host, Gabe. Tonight's theme is A-sides and B-sides. So tell me, listeners, are you an A-side or a B-side? Are you a top 40 hit or an equally good, yet potentially undiscovered gem? I like to think all of us have our A-sides and B-sides, even though digital music has kind of changed all that. Personally, I like my B-side. 
which is hard because everybody else likes my A side, but I'm sticking to it. And yet I played my B side for someone yesterday and he was okay with it. No complaints, nothing. Can you imagine? You see, my birth name is Elizabeth, but I'm a guy, Gabe. My parents think I've gone crazy and the rest of the world is happy to agree with them, but I know I'm right. Got it, world? I'm a guy, a scared guy, though I try not to show it, and a guy with a long freaking road ahead of him, but still, just a guy. I'm tired of being someone else's idea of a hit record. How about you? I know this is a radical idea, but people should get to be who they want to be. If you're going for top 40, all right, A side all the way. But if I want to play my B side, I should get to play my B side. So stay tuned. Beautiful Music for Ugly Children by Kirsten Crone Mills. I guess you can guess that a lot of the action takes place on a radio station. <laughs> Did you want to add anything else about that, Marilyn? It's a pretty fascinating look at that that big gap between who we see ourselves as and who the world sees themselves sees us as, and I think everybody can kind of relate to that. You know, how mm -hmm. do how do we let the world see that authentic self out there? Interesting story. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. This is me. This is Insta GMBA. So, how many how many folks are on Instagram? Oh, not not tons. Do people know what Instagram is? Okay, right. So it's a it's a photo sharing, and it's it's one of the many utilizations of the hashtag. Um, so we have a member of our committee, Jory Hurst, who couldn't be here today, and she's done this with her students and with her um, other librarians, where they have created hashtags for all the books to help quick, easy access points, a few words to help bring kids into the books. And so what I did was I combined the Instagram format and the hashtags, um, and I hashtagged all the books. So you're going to get to see. It might be hard to see from there because they're smaller, but I will go through all of them. So, okay. Here we've got um, our Instagram user, our Insta GMBA user, GMBA1415. This first one. Does anybody know which one it is? If you can read, you can see. Coldest girl. girl, yep. So we did hashtag gold, coldest girl, hashtag quarantine with vamps, hashtag predator prey, hashtag XBF infection drama. <laughs> <laughs> coldest girl in cold town. The next one that's, that's easy for you to see is ready player one. So we've got hashtag Ready Player One. I included the titles in all of these. It would also be great you could include any awards they've won. You can include author names. That makes them more searchable. Um, you could include you know, any tags you want, genre tags as well. And you can also get a little tongue in cheek as you'll see with some of these. Hashtag Oasis, which is the large virtual world that's in Ready Player One. Hashtag Easter eggs, which are those little hidden tidbits that he has to go in and looking for. Hashtag 80s flashback. Hashtag keys to Halliday's fortune. So that's Ready Player One. B-side, this is what Marilee just talked about. This is hashtag beautiful music for ugly children. Hashtag A-side, B-side. Hashtag radio personality. Hashtag trans identity. Hashtag uh, radio 90.3 KZUC. Okay, that's hard to say. Um, and hashtag Music Mentor John. This is a great book also. Um, oh, besides yes. the identity piece, there's a really beautiful mentor relationship piece in this book, um, which is wonderful for kids who want to look about developing healthy relationships. There's a really positive, positive role model in that book. Okay, Escape from Camp 14. Hashtag North Korea. Hashtag um, Real Life Dystopia. Hashtag Human Rights. Hashtag Enslaved. Hashtag Courage, survival, hope. Rotters is in the middle right there. Hashtag father son bonding. <laughs> Hashtag grave robbing. <laughs> Hashtag suspenseful horror. Uh, next, we've got grave mercy. Hashtag arranged marriage. Hashtag handmaiden to death. Hashtag convent living. Hashtag girl power. Um, Every day is right here. And so some of these I used um, pieces of the book covers. Some of them I used quotes. Some of them I used images that were evocative of the themes. Um, so you can really use anything. This could also be something great. You could have illustrations. You could have kids come up with the images that are right there as well as the hashtags too. Um, hashtag every day. Hashtag existential crisis. 
hashtag YOLO, um, which is kind of uh, just tongue in cheek because he kind of lives a million lives and not just one. Um, hashtag make an impact, hashtag body jumping, hashtag uh, satanic possession, little side note for that book, um, hashtag 24 hour romance. The middle is Emperor Mollusk versus the Sinister Brain. That's a long one. Right? <laughs> ha yeah, that's a very long hashtag to write in. Hashtag world domination, hashtag intergalactic menace, hashtag villainous retirement. <laughs> um, the next one is 10, which is one of our, we haven't had kind of, this is, this is one of our more classic murder mystery novels, which yeah. is fun. This is also a great book for some of your reluctant readers. It's not a hard read. So if you're looking for somebody who needs um, a book that isn't going to be super challenging to read, this is a, this is a great choice for them. So this is hashtag 10, hashtag thanks Agatha, um, hashtag vengeance is mine, hashtag island party turn murder spree, hashtag body piles, hashtag teen murder mystery. I want to see, see hashtag voted off the island. Right. <laughs> um, okay, next we've got Joe Gollum, hashtag Joe Gollum in the drowning city, hashtag scavengers and water rats. Hashtag seance gone wrong. Hashtag steampunk. Hashtag mystery. Hashtag adventure. So that's one where you use a little bit more of a genre. Could be a connection thing. Great way if you're having people who want to find something. Um, if, if they come in and they say, I want a great adventure book. You know, utilize it for that purpose. Um, this is out of nowhere. Uh, hashtag soccer star. Hashtag 9-11. Hashtag Somali refugee. Spelled wrong, sorry. Um, hashtag racially charged. Hashtag developing empathy. Mm -hmm. Eleanor and Park, um, which this is this is a book that's really rising. Rainbow Rowell is really rising in, in the mm -hmm. ranks and is a wonderful new YA author to the scene. So I think you'll see a lot more. Um, we actually looked at two of her books for consideration. We looked at Fangirl also. So um, hashtag Eleanor and Park. Hashtag star-crossed misfits. Hashtag mixtape courtship. Mm -hmm. Hashtag alternative love story. Hashtag comic cuties and hashtag first love nerd love. <clears throat> and this is the last, these are the last three. So this is caged graves on the left. Hashtag unhallowed ground. Hashtag rumors of witch witchcraft. Hashtag family secrets and hashtag historical mystery. The middle one is blink and caution. Hashtag street kids. Hashtag foolhardy blackmail scheme. Hashtag redemption. Hashtag witnessed kidnapping. And the last one is fifth wave. Hashtag trust no one. Hashtag them. Hashtag alien invasion. Hashtag kill or be killed. Hashtag body count in the billions. Hashtag zombie soldier. So what's great about this is um, it's a quick access point. So if you've got somebody who's not going to sit there and listen to, you know, th listen to a whole in-depth that isn't going to want to really explore, this is a really quick way. You give them a few words, those quick sell. You know, if there's somebody who needs to hear the word vampire, if there's somebody who needs to hear the word zombie, if there's somebody yeah. who needs to hear uh, body piles, you know, and that's what's <laughs> going to get them into a book, this is a really quick way. It's also a really visual way. You could embed this into, you know, into your website if you needed to, if you wanted um, a way for kids to browse them. So, yeah. This is Insta GMBA. Hashtag thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so here we are, the coldest girl in cold town. And let's pretend I'm Tana. Young, 16 year old, I'm waking up. Oh man, that was a wild party last night. <laughs> and, whoa. Everybody around me is dead. And there's <laughs> blood everywhere. Okay, the vampires obviously came. And this is, you know, something we know is a possibility. And I'm sneaking out the window. Oh, shoot. There's the ex-boyfriend. Really kind of a jerk, but he's tied up on the bed, and I can't leave him. <laughs> and, oh, wow, there's that really hot guy in a cage over there. <laughs> he's probably a vampire, but he's so hot. I'm going to have to let him go, too. And then the story goes from there. Um, she has a little baggage, <laughs> you know? She uh, lives in a time when vampires are out there, and vampirism is a virus that you can catch. Her mother was a vampire and bit her. 
But you don't turn into a vampire unless you then fight somebody else. So it's a really interesting way to look at in a, a different twist to vampire books, you know, because some kids will say, oh, I really don't want another vampire book. This is really talking about, wow, germs and viruses and things like that that can be passed along. <coughs> it's a love story, so if you have kids who like love stories, it's a definite sell for them. And there's enough humor in it, um, and really quirky, cold humor. <laughs> and, ooh, bad pun, I just <laughs> <don't> like that. <laughs> Uh, it's a really fascinating book, and um, you'll want to read it to find out what happens to Tana. Mm. So we're going to give you a little a little dating snapshot. Peter and I are going to talk about two different ways to date a book. So uh, book speed dating, this is a picture of um, some students of mine doing uh, a book speed dating project. And so uh, this is similar to the tournament I was talking about before, where this is an idea that you could do with the GMBA books, or you could do these with, with any books. In this particular picture, they're using many, many books. Um, and so there's two types of speed dating I see. There's the type of speed dating where people are experts. You heard me talk about if you do the whole tournament and lots of students read the GMBA books, they then become GMBA experts. Or there's a type of speed dating where no one has read any of the books you're talking about, or very few people have read very few of the books you're talking about. So the first example here that you see in this picture, there's many tables of books. One, there's a couple tables of realistic fiction. There's a table of historical fiction. There's a table of sci-fi fantasy. There's a table of nonfiction and biography. And what a teacher did was, a teacher came to me and said, you know what, I just want to try something different with my students. Um, I don't want it just a straight book talk. I don't want them just looking at books and, and hearing about them. I really want them touching things. I had seen some things about speed dating, so I figured, okay, let's, let's try that. And so what they were doing was they spent a few minutes um, kind of picking up a couple different books, flipping through, reading the front and back matter, reading several pages, reading about the author. Then uh, to, to go on with Kat's idea, they were putting little hashtags with uh, hashtagging analog with sticky notes on the books, leaving notes for other people. And then they were talking to each other and selecting books. And then they would rotate to the next table. And then um, you know, the, the next people had those hashtags and notes on them, seeing what else uh, the, you know, the comments were from their friends. And then they were able to select books at the end of the class. Um, if you, can you go to the next mm -hmm. one too? So if you were to do this with, um, the book, so that's kind of on the right hand side there, that's new to this, what you, what you would kind of do, spend some time with the books. If you're experts, I think this would be an amazing idea for, you know, do the tournament, get people reading these books, get them really excited about the books, create this group of experts with these, uh, you know, 15 books, 16 books, whatever it is, and then you do a traditional speed dating style where you rotate uh, like you would see, you know, in a, in a bad romantic comedy movie or something where, you know, you're at a table, Two, two students, one, each of them has read a book. They have an opportunity to explain their book to the other student. That student then explains the book to the, to the first one. They rotate and everyone in the room leaves with, with a book, right? And so it becomes this activity where rather than the librarian or the English teacher um, you know, being the expert that's speaking to the, the students, the students are, are becoming the experts with the books themselves and they're taking ownership of the books and they're the ones that are actually convincing or not um, for their friends to, to, to read those books and everyone gets to, to take one. And so this would be perfect for an assignment. I know a lot of teachers at my school and I'm, I'm sure it's happening everywhere else where they're doing more choice book assignments where you know maybe there's a theme and every student is reading books in a particular theme um, and these GMBA books uh, really could be inserted into a lot of those uh, projects and um, having students talk to each other about the books really allows them to take ownership and feel excited about it and feel like they made the choice to read that book. It's, it, uh, it really becomes a pleasure read versus something they were made to read. Nice. And I'm going to talk, a lot of you have probably heard of this concept of doing blind date with a book. Um, and this is very similar um, to what Peter's talking about. But um, we did this at Brownell, and I've seen it done a lot of different places. Um, you basically cover the book, and you can do it. I, I liked, I put the um, one on the left in because I loved, I thought that would be a great way for students to participate, is to actually really illustrate the cover, put some sort of appealing images, some keywords on it. Um, 
we did more um, more like this. We actually wrapped them up, tied them with a bow, so you couldn't even look inside at what was there. Um, you couldn't even see what was inside. And we did a few sentences of what this book is about. Um, we incorporated GMBA books and other books in a school. You could absolutely, it would be great to actually have different classrooms do their own set of these and then share amongst each other so that, and it wouldn't matter if there were duplicate books because that's actually fascinating <clears throat> to see how people describe a book and, and maybe would they recognize it? Do you figure out whether it's a book you know and um, or is it something that's a total surprise? Just quickly, one of the things that I th that was the most appealing um, about this was we were really, it was a really inclusive program when we did it. We were able to get books of all different levels, very high level books and very low level books. And we actually, we did this at a public library. And so we had um, somebody contact us and say, I would like to bring the person I live with who is an adult with an intellectual disability and we would love this and, and these are the types of books he likes. So we were able to bring in all different kinds of books, really vary it, make it an inclusive program because this was somebody who it would have been it would have been very challenging for him to participate in a traditional adult program book talk because the books were too high level. And so this was able gave us that ability to open it up to a wider array of people um, and really engage them. And it was so exciting, you know, for people to say like, oh, I want that one. And, you know, almost became an auction and um and we were very playful about it you know we we definitely like auctioned off like these were bachelors you know like so oh here you know you want to read this and and um and, it, and we did we incorporated gmba and it was a lot of fun and then people came back and because you don't have the same preconceived notions like oh i don't like that author or i don't like books with that type of cover and so it kind of removes those stigmas that sometimes people attach you know we say don't judge a book by its cover but we do absolutely and there's mm -hmm. statistical proof that we do um so this takes that away and really gets you to the essence of what's a book what a book is about and it kind of especially for kids who might not want to carry around a book that looks a certain way or they might not want to, you know, oh, I hate that author. And, you know, look at somebody like um, Maggie Seifotter who did Scorpio Races but who also did books about werewolves and vampires. Her stuff is so different that, you know, you might not want to read one of her books but another one might be so great. It might be the perfect book for you. So it takes away a little bit of that stigma and allows people to explore in a really safe, fun, mysterious way. And actually with it, asking kids to help come up with books, all of a sudden I had kids who haven't read for pleasure in probably a couple of years in high school, really animated talking about books that they absolutely loved and that should be part of the blind date with a book. It was really fun yeah. to just walk around the library and say, okay, it's almost blind date with a book week. What would you recommend? And just to get their conversations going around it and then next thing I knew they were checking out books again. It was wonderful. <laughs> nice, thanks for that. <sighs> okay. So you've heard a couple things about this, but I'll give you more details. So this is the scene. Your mother dies in a tragic accident. She's hit by a bus. You're taken by family services from your home in downtown Chicago and moved to the middle of nowhere in rural Iowa to live with a father that you uh, can't, can't remember. You haven't seen him. He hasn't been around since you were a baby. You get there on the bus. He's not there waiting for you to pick you up. You find directions to his house, walk miles, okay, past cornfields, past shacks, all these things. You get there, he's not there either. In fact, you don't see him for your first several days living there. You try to acclimate, go to school. You're not really fitting in with these kids. You have nothing in common with them from your city life and the things you're interested in. There's this science teacher that wants to make an example out of you for some reason because you're the new kid. He keeps picking on you. You really, your life has gone from what you thought was perfect to you know, worst case imaginable um, in, in just a few days. But what you thought was the worst case scenario <laughs> can actually get a lot worse. <laughs> oh yeah. You start seeing things around the house, uh, old newspapers, obituaries, um, books about um, 18th century Scotland, 19th century Scotland, um, and there's this smell that you can't quite place. <clears throat> Your father, you know, does end up coming home a couple times, but you still can't quite figure out what his deal is and he won't talk to you. So you decide to stow away in the back of his pickup truck for one of his uh, midnight excursions. And you come to find out that, in fact, your father is a grave robber. So what do you do? Do you run? 
do you stay? How badly do you want someone to relate to? How badly do you want to have a relationship with a family member? Would you start robbing graves too if that was the only thing you could do to build that relationship? Maybe a lot of us wouldn't, but <laughs> Joey Crouch, our main character in Rodders, he does, and it's pretty fascinating. Rodders by Daniel Crouch. Oh, it's you, Marilyn. <laughs> Those look familiar. She's like, That's great. I, I know, she's like, does, what's does, it, does anybody do Pinterest? Yep. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Because I'm, I don't hardly do. I mean, my kid and I were playing around one night, and we're thinking about what would be some ways that we could maybe get the word out, right? And so we, in about five minutes, put together this little GMBA thing, and it occurred to me that it might be a really good way to do readers' advisory. Maybe if you know a book that's sort of similar, you could pin it on and sort of make some lists that would be useful down the line. Just mm -hmm. another another quick way to give kids an idea what it, what they're what's out there. Yeah. And again, these are really nice little short snippets, very mm -hmm. easy mm -hmm. to digest. Great little idea. And you said you did this, Marilee. It, it really took about five minutes. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. sat by the kitchen table. It's fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to make you do stuff. Oh, um, good. <laughs> close your eyes, everyone. Close your eyes. You close it over there. I see you. <laughs> you too. Okay. I'm going to say a sentence, and I want you to really imagine this in your head. The dog chased the ball down the road. So take a minute and get that in your head. Picture it. And when you feel like you've got a really solid image, you can open your eyes and just make eye contact with me. Hi, everyone. Okay. So who wants to tell me about their dog chasing the ball? What did it look like? What did it look like? A Jack Russell. It was a Jack Russell. <laughs> no, it was a black lab. Okay, so it was a black lab. Only a black lab. It was a oh, it was with a soccer shepherd. Ball. <laughs> with a soccer ball. No, it was a it funny was a glow ball. ball. It was a glow ball. <laughs> what else was there? Black and white. A green tennis ball. What kind of road? Dirt road. Oh no, it was paved. Paved with sidewalks. Paved with sidewalks. Steep hill. Oh, so we're in, we're in urban or suburbia here. We're on a dirt road there. Okay, what other kind of dogs were there? Beagle. Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu's beagle. What was it? Whoa. Okay, and tell me. So tell me your whole. Tell me your whole picture. This giant wolf hybrid. Well, there's Wait, a road that connects Greensboro Village to Greensboro Bend, and it was pretty much following the ball down the hill down the road. Okay, so you had a really specific context for that road. Okay, tell me your specific dog. It was a mutt. It was a mutt. What was your road? The driveway. Or our driveway. Our driveway. It's like a tennis ball. Okay. So again, a really specific context. One more. Who wants to give me their whole picture? You over there in the lovely coral. Yes. <laughs> I was a black and white uh, Russian <coughs> terrier um, following a big, uh, like a dodgeball. There wasn't anything on either side of the road, though. It was just paved. OK. Heading flat. Just a peppy little dog. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So, so meet A. Um, a is going to wake up tomorrow, and he's going to. They. We we we've right. had this discussion before. A is going to wake up tomorrow, and they're going to meet your wolf hybrid, and they're going to walk down that road from Heinsburg, and they're going to throw that ball, and they're going to be in kind of more rural area of Vermont. They're going to experience that tomorrow. A is going to work up, wake up in the suburbs. Different dog, different ball, different road. Same A. Jack Russell the next day. Different ball, different road, same A. Imagine waking up every morning, experiencing somebody's life in, in their full life, their family, their hardships, their happinesses, their joys, their celebrations, over and over again. Yeah. All English speaking, or does the cultural and linguistic context? Ooh. That's a great question. No. 
Um, so A, we've got a little, we're going, we're going fast, so I'll explain this a little bit. A has a special talent, you know, in this whatever weird concept has happened that A wakes up in a different body every day, there are certain rules to this. One of the rules is that A can access factual information. So A could access language barriers. It takes a while. Mm -hmm. It's not quick. It's not like A is automatically fluent because A has to get back into the subconscious of that person and access it. But A can speak different languages. A can also know, oh, that's my mom. You know, isn't going to wake up and be like, is this lady I'm living with, you know, an aunt, a mom? It's No, that's mom. And I know that I go to the school and I know how to drive there because those things are all embedded in my head. But A doesn't really, can't, it's tougher for A to access emotions and access, how do I feel about this? Mm -hmm. You can take kind of, so you can take cues from it. So, oh, you know, my body's tensing up and, and there's, there's a, we're not really talking as fluidly as we might, so maybe my relationship with this person is tense. But this story, what David Levithan has done here is very fascinating. And we were talking about this actually right before. As a book that's about identity in a lot of ways, it's, it's so hard to pin down because A is everything and A is nothing. And we we go into this thing where we've talked about, um, we were calling A he because the first time you meet A, A is in a male body. A identifies this male, has a relationship with this girl. Peter listened to the audio and A is A's voice is done by a woman. So it's a different perspective. So it's kind of fascinating because whatever day you met A, A would be very different. So we're all trying to wrap our heads around this. Now imagine if you were the person A fell in love with, and then every day A was going to come find you. One day as a giant football player who's got a twin back at home who he's gonna go home and wrestle with. The next day as a severely depressed, suicidal young woman who is literally ripping things off her walls. A is different every day. And um, Rhiannon is the girl who A falls in love with and who has to try to grapple with, is it possible? Is this at all possible or feasible for us to continue in the way we've been? Is, is it at all possible? It's a really fascinating piece about identity, about how we define people. Um, but the underlying current, what I found so powerful about this book and what David Levithan does, is he really challenges the idea of empathy and what empathy is. And if we talk about empathy being the true ability to walk in somebody else's shoes and experience what they experience, um, this probably does a better job than almost anything I've ever read about how we develop empathy. Um, a has kind of made it this mission to never make too much of an impact or change things too much. But when is it worth making an impact? And that's kind of one of the questions. So this is a beautiful book. It's a book that you will ask yourself question after question. I mean, we're still discussing it right before here, and we've already discussed it a million times. Um, David Levithan tends to write a lot about ident identity issues, about GLBTQ communities. Those are underlying pieces of this. But again, it's so kind of existential and cerebral and, and out, of, out of anything you've ever read that um, it does it in such a creative and wonderful way that um, I, think, I think anybody would find. Some parts of it are just brutally heartbreaking and parts of it are hysterically funny and so charming so it's a wonderful wonderful read and here we are at our jamba website and the home page now is the voting form and the deadline for voting either as an individual or as a library is the end of the month may 31st and so please encourage your high school students to either give you their vote or to go online and um, vote individually and so you can choose which form you want to use. So that is this year's voting form. As soon as voting is done, then the new list, the page for that will be the home page and we'll add also all the resources that are on the Vermont Department of Libraries page. Love some ideas as to how to bring this website to life. And if you have any thoughts on how to get students talking and using the site to collaborate, we'd love to do that. And I'm wide open to totally exploding this website <laughs> and making it what will work for you, what will work for your teens. 
So. And one thing too to to um, have in the back of your mind is that next year is the tenth year of, of mm -hmm. the award, right. and so we're going to have a um, contest for a new logo uh, that we hope students around the state will participate in and try to come up with something fresh and mm -hmm. to, to move us forward for the next you know ten years or ho however long. Uh, so that's something to forever in your mind, <laughs> and that could be a way to really uh, get people excited and access the list uh, <coughs> through that as well. Does anybody have any thoughts right now as to things that you would like to see on the site? Or that would help you? Yes. I just love, I love how you're um, going into the descriptions of the books. Can you put your videos on? Absolutely. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Have a page for each book? Would that be helpful? Sure. Okay. And if anybody makes book trailers, has their students make book trailers or other activities, please share them with us and we'll put them up there. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I work in a middle school and my kids are really visual, so maybe if you did the covers for the books and then if you clicked on it, you could go into their trailer and mm -hmm. support okay. things in your book talks, your yeah. Instagram thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds good. And Sue, so we could probably put this. We can probably put this presentation. We could oh, probably we link can to it, yeah, so that this yep. will be there as a resource. Yeah, and mm -hmm. yeah, and we would love. You know, Sue is amazing, and she's our webmaster. So we love student-generated content. So if you guys do creative projects or even have creative ideas, we could even have like an idea blog somewhere on there. Mm -hmm. So whatever you guys are going to find useful and that you think will be useful to other folks who are working with the GMBA or students who are reading it or, or might be interested in reading it. Is there a Twitter account that you could? We can, we've thought about creating a Twitter account, so we can do that, absolutely. Could, you know, just yeah. share your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Hashtag GMBA. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag awesome. I think we figured out that it has to be like GMBA VT because there is a, G oh. I think we figured out GMBA is something else when that we hashtag be. it. So yeah. you have to be careful. Nuances of hashtagging. <laughs> Hashtag awkward. <laughs> Hashtag awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for the website while we're here? Okay, she's going to be, she's going to hate us because this keeps happening um, you're in our yes but yes. we'll just do it quickly because she's mortified because everybody's appreciating her um, but <laughs> we just we'll say it quickly um, but we can't not say it because Grace is one of the most phenomenal professionals anyone can ever have the chance to work with and she's been just an inspiration to all of us and um, oh gosh I didn't know that was going to happen um <laughs> There are a few people who have made such an impact on the world of um, Vermont youth services and libraries and literature. And um, we're all affected by it, but if you think about each child or teen that we've worked with and how that ripples out, I mean, the thousands, the tens of thousands of children <laughs> that you have impacted, Grace, I can't even fathom it. And. Um, we are all better professionals, and the state mm -hmm. is a better, more engaged, creative, and literate state because of you. Um, so thank you for your fearless, bold, and passionate leadership for not just this committee, but for all the committees and for all of the libraries across the state. Um, we love you, and I, you know, I, thank you. yeah, thank you. <laughs>